let's summarize the steps we need to do stress analysis based on uh, the integrated example. Okay, so in the integrated example, we deal with we deal with a very simple case. So I skipped free body diagram and equilibrium equations, right? But here you should know that to do a stress analysis um, for a simple structure, we need we normally need three steps. In the first step, um, we should use free body diagram to determine internal force at the point where the stress should be calculated. And in step two, we determine the cross-section area A at that point. Right? Note that this cross-section area is usually uh, perpendicular to the axis of uh, element, right? if you are determine, determining normal force, and it is uh, parallel to the force if you are determining uh, shear stress. So in the third step, we determine the stress using the given equations. Right? If you are uh, finding normal stress, so the force is, a perpendic is a perpendicular to the cross section. So the equation is shown here: the normal stress uh, sigma equals F over A. And if you are determining shear stress, the force is parallel to the cross section, and we use tau to denote shear stress. So tau equals F or or V, right? So we normally use V to denote shear force, so shear force over the cross section area A. So these are not the same equations, okay? They have different physical meanings. And as said, you should be familiar with free body diagram. So let's just give a very brief review. The free body diagram is a very important topic uh, from statics. So normally we also need three steps to do a free body diagram to determine the internal force in a, in a structure. So uh, in a determinate structure, the number of equilibrium equations equals the number of uh, restraints. So we just need these three steps. So later in chapter three, when we study uh, indeterminate axially loaded elements, you can see that uh, those three steps will not be enough. So we need more equations, more steps to solve the internal forces. In step one, we cut the element to make it free. Right? This is the first step of free body diagram. Cut the element to make it free. In the second step, we apply forces and we put unknown forces or the internal forces on the cut section facing outward. So this is important too. So normally we put it facing outward. And when you cut, uh, when you cut it somewhere, for example, here. So when you cut it from here, uh, so you can you can get two parts, one part with restraint, and the other part is free. So normally we give priority to the free part, since you will not need to deal with the restraint. In the two two dimensional case, uh, the restraint, the the part with the restraint, you may need uh, more equation to solve it. It's more complicated. So we normally give priority to the free parts. Okay, so the third step we use, we, we establish equilibrium equations to determine the internal forces. Right? Uh, so in a 1D, one dimensional axial element, so we can only list one equation. So that is sum of all forces equals zero. But in the two dimensional case, for example, here, right, you will have Fx, Fy, and a bending moment. Right, you have three unknown forces. Right, so you may need three equations. In a 2D case, we have three equations. The first one is the sum of uh, all forces along x direction equals zero. Sum of all forces along y, y direction is zero. And the sum of uh, bending moment with respect to one point regarding one specific point is also zero. So we got three equations to solve three unknowns. Okay, those are the basic theory. And then let's uh, go through several examples to practice them. Okay, uh, here is the example one. Well, in this example, just we give a uh, belt, right? Determine the maximum stress in this belt. 
the width had been given that is 50 millimeter and thickness is 8 millimeter. And the P1, P2, P3, and P4 have all been given. So determine the maximum normal stress in this belt. This is a 1D problem, one dimensional problem. Right? So first of all, let's ask you how many different internal forces or how many different normal stresses can you find in this belt? How many? Right, so three, right? Three, so we have a internal force between AB and between BC, between CD, right? So we just need to do three cards and do three times of a, a free body diagram and internal force analysis. Right. If we cut it from here, between AB, so a random point between AB, we just cut it here to make the A part free. As shown here, this is the first free body diagram. I right. just so cut it, uh, apply forces as a P1, and put the internal force, the unknown internal force, F1 here, all towards. Okay, all towards. This is the F1. So based on this, you can get a um, equilibrium equation. So that is negative P1 plus F1 equals zero. Right? So this is the first equation. Then the second analysis, you cut it from here. So now this one will be useless. Right? You cut it between BC to make it free, to make AB free. And then you apply the forces P1, uh, P1 here and P2, two P2s here. Then you, you put the unknown internal force F2 outward at the cut section. This is the F2 outward. Right? So this is the, the, the second one. So based on this, you can get a um, um, equilibrium equation that will be negative P1 minus right, two P2s. We have two P2s, right? Two times P2 plus F2 equals zero, right? Then let's look at the third part. You just cut it between CD, make it free. So then you have two choices. You can use the left part or the right part. Of course, obviously, using the right part would be much simpler since you have only one known, one unknown, right? So you cut it here, apply the external force P4, and then put the unknown internal force F3 all towards, right, all towards this time is the left pointing. So based on this, we can get an equation that will be negative F3 plus P4 equals zero. All right, we got this such, such three equations. Okay, let's solve it now, so after this analysis. So here, uh, determine the maximum stress. So we just need to do three calculations based on the three analysis. We get these three numbers. Uh, we can get the three internal forces since they have the same cross section area. So if we can uh, identify the maximum internal force, then we can use it to calculate the maximum normal stress. Right? The equation would be normal stress equal one uh, equal F over A. Right? So the A is easy to calculate. We can leave it later. So first step, we'll just calculate uh, the F, right? We're determining the maximum F. Right? In the first step, we're calculating F, right? Step one, uh, from the first um, free body diagram, we have obtained that uh, the sum Fx equals zero and we got this equation is negative P1 plus F1 equals zero, right? So the, uh, so the F1 equals P1, right? That is 30 ki kilo Newton, 30 km. And second step, again, Fx equals zero, and we can get negative P1 minus 2p2 plus f2 equals 0. 
And from here, we can get that F2 equals uh, just P1 plus 2P2, right? 30 plus 8 times 2, that would be 36, uh, 46 kilonewton. And the third step, again, the same equation, sum of uh, all forces along x direction equals 0. So from the third three-body diagram, we, we have got that negative F3 plus P4 equals 0. So the F3 equals P4. P4 is 22 kilonewton. Right? So you can see that all of them are positive. All of the results, F1, F2, and F3 are positive, meaning that all of them are in tension. Right? All of them are in tension. If you get a negative number in that part, it will be in compression. Right? So which one of these three are the maximum one? So you just compare the three, three numbers, right? 30, 46, and 22. Right here, we got the maximum value here. Right? So the F max equals F2, and that is 46 kilonewton. And step two, step two, we will just calculate the area, right? The area, cross-section area would be width is 50, thickness is eight. So just uh, 50 times eight, we get 400 square millimeter. So the maximum maximum normal stress would be F max over A. Right? So 46 kilonewton over 400 square millimeter. Right? So this, please take care of uh, the uh, units okay so here we can just uh, uh get it to four forty six thousand over 400 and the unit will be newton per square millimeter here will be zero point one one five times 1,000 Newton per square meter, or this will be 115, and Newton per uh, square millimeter will be what? Will be this MPA, right? megapascal. Well, this equals megapascal. Since, uh, uh, newton per square meter will be Pascal, so Newton per square millimeter will be MPA. Right? Please be familiar, but get familiar with all of these unit conventions as we have emphasized in the last time in lecture one.